morning. It's Monday, November 19th, 2018. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Falling into the Hands of the Living God, and our scripture is Hebrews chapter 10. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we've received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. There's only the terrible expectation of God's judgment and the raging fire that will consume his enemies. For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge, I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Most pastors I know have favorite passages of scripture they love to preach. We love to preach about how God loves the entire world, how everyone is welcome at the table. We love to preach about heaven and reunion with loved ones. And then there's this passage, sinning past forgiveness raging fire of judgment, trampling on the Son of God, falling into the vengeful hands of Almighty God. It's a message no pastor wants to preach and which no congregation wants to hear. But there it is, nonetheless. And if a preacher would hide this message, stuff it away in some bin of stuff to be dealt with later, that so-called minister is as bad as a parent who wouldn't snatch his child off the railroad tracks or out of traffic. This past Thursday's local news told of a Greensboro man who was supposed to be watching his three-year-old son while his wife was at work. He fell asleep and the boy wandered out in the cold. The father was arrested and charged with child abuse. Now, if a man who treats the physical life and the emotional well-being of a child, his own child, as recklessly as that, is despicable, What is a pastor who doesn't tell people the truth about eternity, about the danger of wandering with their souls in darkness? The writer of Hebrews was never in danger of being contacted by Hallmark to use his story for one of their feel-good movies. But this is a message the world can hardly afford to miss. It takes the feel-good passage of John 3.16 where God so loves all of us that he gave his only son to die in our place and follows up with this message that since you've accepted that truth and been forgiven and welcomed into God's family, you'd better follow up and live like it, or there will be dire consequences. Now, that may sound like a wide-eyed, furious threat, but it's simply a well-reasoned, loving caution, a warning from common sense that says, when you bear the family name, it's expected that you'll behave like you're really a member of the family. Friends, there's no other way to put this. God's forgiveness is durable, and when he forgives you, it is forever. But that does not mean you cannot willingly turn your back on that forgiveness and trample on God's gift of salvation and offend God. Frankly, no human being owns that kind of of get-out-of-jail-free card. The reason why I get up early every day to write this devotion is to remind any of us who want to be helped that while we can never repay God for the free gift of salvation, we do have a responsibility to live in gratitude for such a magnificent gift. Nobody really wanted our dogs, Welly and Gracie. We adopted them into our home and they got free room and board. They're bathed and fed and protected, played with and cost millions of dollars at the vet each year. Now, neither of them writes us thank you notes or worships the ground we walk on, but every day we see expressions of happiness and love and joy as we live together. They engage with the Brownworth household and act like their family. Sometimes I think my dogs know how to respond to love much better than I do. For you today. So, the reminder every pastor dreads having to give. If you're a believer, don't grieve the Spirit or trample on the blood of Christ. He's a living God whose anger is fierce and final. Rather, go close, 
Stay in love with God, with the Lord and his people. That's the way to fall into the hands of a loving God. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.